All right, welcome back. Is everybody full and happy? <clears throat> I'll take that as a yes. We'd like to acknowledge the distinguished guests in attendance. Please hold your applause until the end. From the city of Torrance, Mayor Patrick J. Fury and his wife, Terry. <laughs> Councilwoman Heidi Ashcraft. Councilman Mike Griffiths. Councilman Milton S. Herring. Councilman Jeff Rizzo. Councilman Kurt Wiedemann. City Manager Leroy Jackson. Fire Chief Martin Cerna. The City Clerk of Gardena, Mina Semenza. Representing State Senator Ben Allen, Deputy Chief of, Chief of Staff, Samuel Liu. <laughs> Representing Assemblymember Al Murasuchi, Field Deputy Cody Bridges. <laughs> Representing Los Angeles County Supervisor Janice Hahn, Field Deputy Mark Warnick. Past Chairman of the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, Jonathan Bueller. Mark Warnick. Sherry Kramer. Tara O'Brien. And members of the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to invite Dan Armanderas District Manager of California Water Service Company to the stage to introduce our speaker. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, my name is Dan Armendariz. I'm the District Manager with California Water Service and we proudly serve uh, many portions of the South Bay from our Torrance office. I love to call that our headquarters. Uh, today I have the distinct privilege of introducing an individual who has had a great advocate for both businesses and residents in Los Angeles County, Supervisor Hahn. Supervi Janice has dedicated much of her life to public service, making the South Bay communities better places to live. She has served on the Los Angeles City Council, in Congress, and on Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors. Janice was elected to the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors in November of 2016. She represents the 4th District, which stretches from Marina del Rey, through the beach cities, the Palos Verdes Peninsula, Harbor Area, Long Beach, all the way through the Gateway Cities east of Diamond Bar. It's a pretty big area. In her short time on the board, Supervisor Hahn has already established herself as a leader in the struggle to end the current homeli uh, homeless crisis a champion for communities plagued by pollution and health problems, and a dynamic new voice on the Metropolitan uh, Board of Directors. Supervisor Janice Hahn inherited a passion for public service from her late father, Supervisor Kenneth Hahn, who held public office in Los Angeles County for 50 years and has left behind an incredible legacy of service. While in Washington, Janice served on the Homeland House Security Committee, Committee on Small Businesses, and the Committee of Transportation and Infrastructure. She earned nationwide recognition for founding the Ports Caucus in Infrastructure, where she recruited over 100 fellow um, members of colleagues to uh, effort and colleagues to advance the port issues and in infrastructure. She's been a leader in efforts to rebuild our national uh, freight infrastructure system, leveling the playing field for small businesses and reducing gang violence in our communities. During her time in Congress, Janice had a reputation for working to find common ground in the political aisle on behalf of the American people. And, and I can attest that um, she's very good at getting the people to the table to, to work uh, to common ground. And on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce and our local businesses, thank you, Janice, for your leadership and service. Now, without further ado, Supervisor Hahn.
Thank you, Dan, for that lovely introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's always a pleasure to be with all my friends um, here uh, at Sunrider. Thank you, Jonathan, for hosting us uh, today. Um, I just also wanted to give a shout out to Chef uh, Jean Cordero and entertaining friends. Fabulous food. I remember it from last year. And it is absolutely delicious. Love the salad and the strawberries. A very creative. Anyway, lovely lunch. Thank you. I also want a lot of VIPs in the room, a lot of my uh, elected official colleagues. It's always nice to be with you. But I want to give a shout out to, I have a couple of relatives here, uh, Ted and Carolyn Porter. Uh, Carolyn used to be a Han before she became a porter. St stand up, Ted and Carolyn. Ted, man, you all remember Ted worked many, many years for Southern California Edison. Uh, and I actually sort of took his job after he left, and I then worked for Edison for a few years. Carolyn is the daughter of my dad's older brother, Henry Hahn. Um, so they've just celebrated their 60th uh, wedding anniversary. And um, you can probably, you're going to start to figure out how old I was. I was a flower girl in their <laughs> wedding. <clears throat> So you know I had to be of a certain age to walk down the aisle and behave myself. Congratulations. Nice to see my relatives in the audience. Um, and thank you, uh, Dan, for saying that. So uh, for, this is not a part of my prepared remarks. But so Dan, uh, Cal Water, uh, they're doing a pretty major um, piping water project that really is important for our water quality and safety and reliability. However, uh, they, their route uh, was heading straight for the destruction of a 60-year-old ear pod tree from Brazil uh, in, the, in our lovely South Coast uh, Botanic Gardens. Uh, so uh, I've been really impressed with uh, Cal Water. Uh, their people, my people, we've had attorneys in the room, and we're actually coming to an agreement of how we can bring safe, reliable water to the South Bay and save that tree. And I really appreciate Dan's work in doing that. From what I understand, they're actually going to be hand digging around this tree, so they're taking volunteers. <laughs> So again, thank you, uh, Torrance Chamber and all the sponsors here today for inviting me a uh, second year in a row uh, to come and address uh, this lunch. And I am also wearing jeans uh, today because it is Denim Day in Los Angeles County. And uh, for those of you who don't know, it was um, an Italian uh, uh, lost a case in 19... 97, where a woman was um, raped by her driving instructor, and he was convicted uh, for the crime, and the judge overturned the conviction because she had been wearing tight jeans. Uh, so in this era of uh, Me Too and, and really trying to make all of our workplaces sexual harassment free, I think this year is even more important uh, that we stand up and uh, in solidarity uh, for uh, the rights of women everywhere uh, to feel safe and free uh, in all environments, but particularly in their uh, work environment. I also wanted to give a big shout out to my three beach commissioners here, Terry Fury, um, uh, Jonathan Butler, and, and uh, Leslie Cortez. Uh, they serve us very well on our beach commission. And I have uh, many, many uh, commissions that I fill in Los Angeles County with really smart, capable people. And Los Angeles County depends on our citizen commission uh, form of government. Uh, we can't know everything, and our uh, bureaucrats in the county can't know everything. So we depend on real people uh, to sit on these commissions and uh, help us make policy decisions 
that impact uh, residents everywhere. So thank you. It's a volunteer job, and it's a lot of work, and I, I thank you for that. Also wanted to give a shout out to Matt Johnson, who's also uh, a field deputy for me, and uh, he represents me uh, very well um, in the South Bay as well. Um, so a couple of you actually came up to me this morning walking in and said you had followed me on social media and, and knew that I was back in Washington, D.C. last week. Um, so uh, once a year, the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors, along with a giant team, we have our county sheriff, we have our director of mental health, uh, we have our uh, CEO, uh, we have our county council, we all go in mass back to Washington, D.C. for one week and walk the halls of Congress. I will say my initial reaction was I was glad I was just visiting. <laughs> and I knew that I had a flight out of there uh, at the end of the week and uh, uh, was happy to see a lot of my former colleagues, but really happy that I had made the decision to not seek reelection in Congress and instead come home and serve all of you on the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors. I'll tell you, it's a better job for me, it's a better fit for me, and uh, I've already seen in a year and a half how much we can get done in the county of Los Angeles. It's not that we don't have big problems, but we actually have a good working relationship with uh, all of the, we have five of us on the County Board of Supervisors, four are women, and uh, we work together well and we get things done. We met with Senator Dianne Feinstein, and uh, she's made it very clear that one of her big uh, priorities is going to be uh, focusing on the homeless crisis in California, particularly in Los Angeles County. Um, as you know, we have 58,000 people who are sleeping on our streets in Los Angeles County every night. Many of them are veterans. Uh, many of them are women. Uh, with children who are fleeing domestic violence. About 30% of the people on our streets are having mental health uh, issues. A lot of people we can't underestimate, uh, you know, have uh, the rents have risen on them and they've been unable to keep up with that. Some people lost their homes in the 2008 uh, economic downturn and never recovered. So there's all sorts of reasons people are on our streets, but nevertheless, she wants to help focus on how we can move people one at a time into permanent uh, supportive housing and really help people uh, get back on their feet. We uh, also had a meeting back there with uh, Congress Member Judy Chu and Congress Member Tony Cardenas and we talked about the future of the Affordable Care Act and we talked about how it would really hurt Los Angeles County uh, if they began to block grant Medicaid uh, that would really hurt our ability uh, to serve so many people in Los Angeles County with good quality health care. I met with the Assistant Secretary of Transportation about federal funding that we are going to need for our freeway and our transit projects here across the county. And um, I, I felt like it, it was an important trip. I know when I was in Congress, and many of you came back. You, many of you have an access day that you come back to Washington, D.C. And I always said, it matters when you walk the halls of Congress. We wanted to see people. We wanted to see faces. We wanted to hear real problems of the constituents back home and how we could help. And I think it mattered to them uh, that th we were there advocating on behalf of um, uh, Los Angeles County. We're, we kept saying over and over how Los Angeles County was a model for the rest of the country. Again, not that we don't have the same big problems, everybody does, but we have a great working relationship on how we're solving these problems. We just uh, passed a $30 billion budget, a uh, balanced budget. Uh, we're investing in infrastructure projects. Uh, we've got a rainy day fund. Uh, so we're, we're a good county. And you know what? We brought up several times the fact that L.A. County has taxed themselves to solve some of these problems. Uh, last March, uh, voters in L.A. County passed Measure H, which added a quarter cent sales tax to fund uh, issues affecting our homeless. 
Uh, we, the year before, passed Measure M, uh, the transportation project. That'll bring in $120 billion for transportation projects. And every meeting I went and I said, you know, that should put us at the head of the class. You know, when you're looking to match grants, when you're looking to give federal dollars, you should really look at Los Angeles County because the rest of the country, trust me, does not tax themselves. Uh, they pretty much complain about taxes being too high. But what we found in LA County, if voters know what the tax is going for and there's some accountability and transparency, they will vote to help solve the problems. And I've always loved that about the residents of LA County. Uh, we want to be a part of the solution. And I think long term, that will help us uh, when the state or the federal government is looking to uh, give us some money. One of the things I'm pushing for, and it relates to homeless, um, that if we're going to address homelessness, uh, we need to change some of the longstanding practices uh, that we've that been, have been hindering our ability to get uh, people the help they need. Um, and one clear example is currently under state law, our paramedics, when they respond to 911, uh, and if it's a homeless person, they have to take that person. Uh, to an emergency room, to a hospital. Uh, and we believe now uh, that there are better places for people who are having a mental health crisis um, or possibly are, are uh, inebriated uh, than going to the emergency room. You know, our emergency rooms are overcrowded. Uh, people in emergency rooms need to be there because they have real emergencies. But people who are having mental health uh, crisis or uh, who need to sober up, don't need to go to uh, an emergency room. The irony of this is uh, my dad was the one that created this very first law uh, in the late 60s that created the paramedic program. Uh, and part of that law, I'm sure back in the 60s, you know, it was a new concept to have firefighters treating people in the field and administering drugs to somebody having a heart attack uh, by somebody who wasn't a licensed physician or nurse. So I'm sure that law said you have to then uh, take them uh, to a licensed medical facility and an emergency room. But now we're finding that that hinders our paramedics and that our paramedics, by the way, are triaging people every day. They know if you're having a stroke. They know if you're having a heart attack. They know if you're uh, you know, have a, a broken limb or you're bleeding. And they also can tell uh, whether or not you might just need to go to a sobering center uh, or one of our new mental health urgent care. Uh, so we are changing the law, but uh, AB 1795 is uh, the bill that uh, Assembly Member Mike Gibson is carrying for uh, Los Angeles County. And um, Currently, it uh, passed the uh, Health Committee unanimously last week, so we feel good about it. Initially, it was opposed by the, uh, the nurses. It was opposed by the emergency room doctors. Uh, but you know who was with us on that bill? The Torrance Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> and this is an example up in Sacramento when the Torrance Chamber of Commerce shows up as a support of a bill, it reverberates for a lot of assembly members and senators. Um, and I think that was part of the strength that we had in Sacramento uh, last week. But you know what? When my dad worked on his paramedic bill, everybody was against it. The nurses were against it. The, the doctors were against it. The California Hospital Association was against it. Everybody thought it was a kooky idea uh, to have firemen uh, you know, be medicine men. Uh, even his own fire chief of the county was against it. So you know, I one of the things I've learned from my dad, if you, think you're, if you think you're right and you think it's a good idea and you think it makes common sense, you've got to just persevere. And uh, most of the time, the right thing will happen. So we feel pretty, we still have some work to do on that bill. Uh, but I think it makes common sense. And then if, the, if we pick up a homeless person, we can much better get them the help they need. 
if they can be taken to a mental health urgent care or a sobering center, then it's easier for us to dispatch all of the caseworkers and county um, mental health professionals who can really begin to hopefully break the cycle. Otherwise, what happens? They get released from the emergency room. Guess what? They're back on the street. And the cycle starts over. Somebody calls 911, and it starts happening. So I think this is a good thing for all of us. And I, I, I pretty feel pretty good it's going to pass, and the governor will sign it. So again, last week I was in Washington. I met with the uh, Pentagon. Uh, they were busy last week. I guess there were some <laughs> airstrikes in Syria or something <laughs> happening. Uh, but I still uh, wanted to meet uh, with them because um, I met with the Assistant Secretary, Rich Hartley, who oversees bases for the Air Force Base. And I wanted to make it my personal mission to uh, talk about our Air Force Base um, in El Segundo and why it's so important to us here in the South Bay. You know this company supports thousands of good-paying jobs. Uh, the aver average aerospace job pays over $100,000. I think these are good jobs, uh, they're worth fighting for, and we're always concerned about whether or not that Air Force Base is going to show up on the BRAC, uh, the base realignment and closure uh, process that Congress goes through every once in a while. Uh, so I just wanted to be back there and say why you know, our Air Force Base should never show up on that list and why it's so important. Uh, really, not just here, but it is really the, you know, it doesn't have a runway. It's the only Air Force Base that doesn't have a runway. But the brain trust that is centered around that Air Force Base is important, not just to the South Bay, but clearly to national uh, security. Uh, so he was very familiar with our Air Force Base, so he knew exactly what we were talking about. And he didn't show his cards on whether or not there even was going to be a, a BRAC process, uh, but he, he left me clues um, about what would, what would sort of ensure that uh, we did not show up on that list. Um, and he talked about added value, and he talked about, uh, you know, joint uses uh, for other things. And when they look at a base, they look at how it might be totally interwoven uh, with the community, with L.A. County, so that separating that would cause all sorts of havoc. So I'm going to uh, set up meetings uh, in the next couple months uh, between the Air Force and us, and I want the Torrance Chamber and anybody else who uh, wants to be a part of this to talk about more we can do to give added value to that Air Force base. So a couple of you in the audience were talking about Metro. Uh, the other thing I do besides just be a county supervisor is I'm on the board of directors for Metro, Metro uh, Metropolitan Transportation Authority. Um, and again, Measure M is bringing in $120 billion to build projects all over uh, the county. We are going to get that Green Line extension uh, to LAX and to the tran Torrance Transit Center. Uh, we've got some challenges. Mr. Mayor, uh, <laughs> we've got some challenges that have come up recently, and I want to talk to you about it. Uh, but, you know, anytime you build a transportation project, there's always going to be some conflict with the neighborhoods where it goes through or the neighborhoods it doesn't go through or the stops it stops at or the place that it should stop at but it's not stopping at. So, again, in my ability to bring people to the table. I've already had a couple of meetings where we all sit down and try to come to some common ground on how we can build that project because that is important. I think forever we've all uh, felt disappointed that the Green Line never made it to the airport uh, and, and nor did it make it to the, the Torrance Transit Center. So we're working on that. One of the things I'm thinking about, and I'm going to have the Metro staff report back on it, I drive the 110 every day, but I'm not going to complain about my commute because it used to be a 3,000-mile commute uh, <laughs> that took me 10 hours. So I'm not going to complain about it. But uh, those of you who drive in our express lanes and have transponders and uh, you read the signs, a lot of people don't even know what the signs mean. Sometimes it's HOV, 2 plus, flex, width. Uh, 
we had a focus group, and there were people who thought HOV lanes were high octane vehicle lanes. <laughs> so, you know, it proves my point. Not everybody knows what those signs mean. And sometimes people will get into the express lane. Uh, they, have, they don't have a transponder. I prefer to err on the good side of human beings and think that they were either confused uh, or maybe they just thought, I am late today. My boss has told me if I'm late one more time, uh, I'm going to lose my job. Maybe you're rushing to the hospital to see a grandchild being born. There's reasons that I think people might want to hop in the express lane. I'm proposing that we decriminalize that activity. Uh, right now, if you do that, uh, you get a ticket, you get a fine. Some people go to traffic court uh, over it. We have the technology right now to take the picture of everybody in that lane, their license plate, and send them a bill. My idea is, Okay, so you jump in there one day. You didn't, you didn't go through the find the transponder. You haven't read the welcome book. You, do, you don't know HOV plus two flex if, you know, you had to. But you thought, I want to use that lane. I say, snap the picture of your license plate, send you a bill. You're charged for that day, whatever the, the congestion pricing was that day. We know all that and be done with it. Take the judgment out of it, take the criminality out of it, uh, and, and uh, treat people more like customers uh, in, uh, on our highways more than criminals that we need to catch and punish. I think people feel like criminals in LA driving a car. <laughs> I mean, you can't park places, you can't drive in certain lanes. Uh, this is LA, we are a car culture. I want more people to take public transportation, but until that happens, I think we should lower the, the judgment. So that's one of the things I'm doing. Um, it's t my time is up, I know. A lot more stuff going on in the county. Thank you so much. I love representing all of you on the County Board of Supervisors. I look forward to you bringing forth your ideas and your concerns and uh, uh, your brilliant ideas on how I should govern uh, because I'm more than happy uh, to partner with you. So thank you, everybody. It's great to be here. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tara O'Brien. I'm with Kaiser Permanente, and I was so nervous about wearing jeans today. Um, to, to say thanks to Supervisor Hahn, and I was thrilled to see you wearing jeans today, and we at Kaiser Permanente stand in solidarity with you in raising awareness of sexual assault. It's a very important issue. Uh, and we also, let's give her another round of applause just for showing all the great things that are happening in the county. So on behalf of the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce, we have a little token of our appreciation, and we thank you for everything you do for our community. Good afternoon. I'm Lori Brandt. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the co-owner of the Red Carvery and Restaurant and the current chairwoman of the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce. It's my pleasure today to honor an individual who is a wife, a mother, a grandmother, a businesswoman, and a former school board member for over 12 years, and a current Torrance City Councilwoman since 2013. As I prepared these remarks today, I could not help but reflect on a quote that Councilwoman Ashcraft said in the Daily Breeze when she decided not to pursue re-election to spend more time with her family. She said, I know for sure I will be off council for one week and no one will remember I was there. <clears throat> she added, hopefully when I'm long gone from this earth, my granddaughter will remember that I was there to cheer her on. Well, Councilwoman Ashcraft, we at the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce disagree. We will miss you cheering us on. We will miss you at all of our ribbon cuttings, our legislative luncheons, and all the other events that you attended over the last five years. 
Thank you again for being a champion for all of our local businesses and a huge supporter of the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce. Get a Marshall, <laughs> tiny. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in acknowledging Councilwoman Ashcraft for all of her support of the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> and Heidi, I'd like to invite you to the stage. We have something for you. I don't want, this is a big surprise, and I thank you, Chamber. I, uh, my involvement has not been for any reason other than I love people, and um, that's the worst part of me, not being part of this election cycle. I said to Councilman Wiedemann just last night, uh, I know there's an election going on, and how calm I am. <laughs> and <laughs> when you're in the midst of an election, you think everybody knows how crazy life is and how stressed you are. And um, I thought, maybe things are different. He said, no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> so I will miss the people I love. I love being involved. And I'm not dying and I'm not going away. <laughs> um, Tuesdays are going to, in tennis time, are going to be devoted to my granddaughter. And I only have one granddaughter. And um, as... Uh, uh, as was said, it, it's where I need to be, but my heart is always with everybody in this room that are so special to me. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi. A final thank you to Supervisor Hahn for her remarks, the corporate sponsors for supporting the event, with special thanks to presenting sponsor, California Water Service Company. Sunrider International for hosting this event, Entertaining Friends Catering Service, Torrance City Cable for airing this event, Senile Sound, Luke Duperon and Lieutenant Hart for their role in today's presentation, Tamiza's Treats for the gifts presented today, TAC President and CEO Donna Duperon, and TAC staff for their management of a well-run event. God bless you all, have a great day. Thank you.